So the past few months I've come to the realization that um, America is a very religious country. Like I already knew that growing up here and living here. Um, but for me, like it's always been strange to be in America because I'm a pretty rational, critical person. Um, I'm also imaginative, so that's a little bit strange because I have a pretty powerful imagination, but at the same time I know that it's my brain producing like different sorts of images or sounds or whatever. Um, but ultimately I think that all that's just happening in my brain and there's an objective reality. And I mean I thought that since I was young, even though I gravitated towards the arts. So basically for me I've always been a um, really skeptical of religions and just thought I remember going to church when I was like eight or nine it just didn't really make sense to me why we would believe these stories just because they're from a book and then the stories from the Bible are so bizarre that unless we kind of like interpret them into a way that makes sense for our society like if you just try to read them and not like extract a moral that's um, kind of more understandable for our own society's values, it just starts to get really bizarre, especially if you read the Old Testament. So basically I just want to make a video and just say that I'm a full-blown full atheist and have been since I was like 10. And the reason why I would say this is not to try to, um, I mean, it, it, to me it's just like an obvious thing. I've just been surprised how it's hard to say that in America without getting sort of um, almost like vilified like within a lot of groups so it's it's been surprising to me um, just how hard it is to actually explain that to people and to talk about it and how people will somehow a lot of people think it's sort of a really shocking or bad thing because I agree with all the morals of our society and I share most of my morals with religious people as long as they're they care about improving society and living the best lives they can and having a certain degree of tolerance and I live my life very morally so like it's weird because when I'm around really conservative people I actually get along good with them because I'm actually pretty conservative and in, in terms of just believing that people should try to live their lives the best way possible so a lot of conservative people actually like me I mean I'm I'm not full-blown conservative but in terms of that like I think that it is worth trying to live a good life and to promote um, like family values and stuff but then like to try to explain how I'm an atheist it just kind of puts you in like a weird territory so I, I don't know I've just been thinking like lately I'm just tired of saying that I'm agnostic because agnostic kind of leaves open the possibility that any any value or belief is okay or is valid I mean it might be okay like if you're getting good practical results from it but there's a big difference between practical results from a belief which could be false or true it doesn't matter like a lot of what we think about ourselves is false and that's where like a lot of times people have problems in their life because they think they're too good at something and then they go try to do it and fail or they undervalue themselves so I think that we all are delusional a bit about our idea of like what we are as individuals so I mean that's just a good example of how depending on what our belief is it really affects how we do how we do things um, but to me it's just it's very clear that there's no evidence for religions and I mean I've read the Bible three times one time very seriously with a lot of the theology students in college and I totally heard all their arguments um, and a lot of the arguments come from Thomas Aquinas who, who was alive in the 13th century and to me they're just completely language games and there wasn't modern science in that time period it was before the 1500s when science really began and science is our best method for obtaining objective truth so anyways it's I don't know I've just been feeling like sort of 
I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube and realizing there's lots of other atheists or, or skeptics or agnostics who aren't agnostic in the sense of just oh yeah anything that feels good or sounds good or that makes me happy or get good results is therefore a good belief because that's a very very dangerous slippery slope to be on because let's say all of society adopted a very toxic belief such as let's say everybody decided Islam was evil I mean there's aspects of Islam that are very dangerous not I mean within their own societies and and in relation to some of the Western countries, but to just start to get like a mentality like all Islam is evil is a very, very um, dangerous idea. So, I mean, just trying, trying to get, or like one more example would be maybe like pot makes you smarter. Like it might make you more relaxed or like have some creative thoughts, but I mean, I don't like to smoke pot at all because it makes me dumber. Like most people I know who smoke a lot of pot get dumber in terms of actually being able to to do anything pra like actually anything useful and I see it kind of diminishes people's willpower but let's say all society started saying that we need to smoke pot like everyone would be like that sounds really weird but let's say it made everybody happier and this is kind of a bad example I mean I wouldn't believe it so I mean I have tons and tons of thoughts about all this but I've just been realizing that the more I'm just honest that I'm just an atheist and a skeptic and I basically believe in a, I do believe in objective reality that we kind of approach through science and I don't believe in revelation or like some sort of in intuitions of higher forces and for me personally I actually go farther and I I actually haven't seen any evidence that there's any sort of top-down organizational structures in the universe I mean as humans like we have concepts in our mind which feel like they're top-down like if I see an object and apply a label to it, in a sense it's kind of like the way that I interact with that object sort of depends on my idea, but I haven't seen any evidence that that's how the universe works, that's how our brains work. So like for me personally I'm actually um, like to me that I would even draw a line there in terms of sort of the methodologies that people try to apply to the universe I think there's a definitely needs to be a line between what's a what sort of a social practical understanding versus what's a um, what's more of a bottom-up approach in terms of like the universe starts with small particles and builds into larger structures and then ultimately arrives at where we are and we don't have a full picture of that but it's the best we can do as humans and the last thing I'd say about skepticism is just basically it just comes down to you don't accept things just because people tell you you should or that makes them feel good I mean you can you can engage in that kind of conversation but it doesn't have anything to do with truth it has more to do with sort of social bonding and also like speculative thought can be really powerful for getting yourself into a situation where you can discover truth but actual truth is really hard to discover that's why scientific discoveries are um, very hard to obtain. If science was easy, like we would, we would think of science a lot different. It's very hard, and it requires a lot of conflicting opinions. And there's a ton of skepticism is really necessary for science to progress. Because let's say everyone would have thought like Ptolemy, like the first cosmological um, model that explained the planets, was right, and they just figured that was done. Well, then we would just be stuck with that. But that actually wasn't an accurate model. And then there was conflicting data, so then Newton came along, and that helped prompt him to come up with his model. And then there was conflicting data there, so people figured that we either didn't have enough data, or there had to be a better model to explain forces, and then Einstein came along and provided a better model of how gravity worked to explain those phenomena. So I'm kind of rambling right now, and I don't really have any, like, point in saying this I'm just really tired like it's really tiring to live in America and not be able to say say what you think like to not to think that religions are just man-made structures that are basically in large part irrational but they definitely have practical effects but like it's kind of like it's irrational in the sense that like our English language is irrational or whatever language you speak like we didn't we use it 
but it's like it's hard to know exactly how it's working because our brains are so complicated. So the other thought I've been having is just like I wish that when I was younger, I would have heard more people say that they were an atheist. Like my grandpa's, for for all intents and purposes, is an atheist. He's an engineer, and it would have had a big impact on me to hear some people say that and be okay with saying that. Um, because otherwise, it's kind of like you feel like a, a real weird person in America if you're an atheist in a lot of social situations. And what's hard is like, like I said, like I agree with people's morals, but the foundation for those morals seems to me to be different than the religious texts. A lot of the morals are just obvious, and we would all share them even if there weren't the religious texts. And then it's weird because then you start to say, well, I don't really. I think that like the Book of Mormon is pretty weird. I think the Old Testament is pretty bizarre. Like maybe we should think about where that came from and what this is saying. And you know, we could talk about it, but I mean, um, it just sort of like all of a sudden becomes like this strange divisive force. So usually I don't even like talk about it because it sort of leads to unnecessary division. But I have had situations, especially the last couple years, but also when I was younger, where people sort of lose their critical thought, their ability to think critically because they embrace religion and they start to deny all sorts of weird things that are true about the world. Um, and that can be pretty pretty bad. Like it can have some pretty bad consequences if people start to get into that sort of circular reasoning defensive mindset and and end up wanting to believe stuff that just doesn't fit the facts of, of reality. It can, it can cause a lot of social division. Aside from social division, it just also sort of short circuits your pathway to truth, which can be very dangerous. And I've actually fallen into that trap myself, not through religion, but through engagement with what's called critical theory, because I was a literature major in college. And a lot of critical theory, I would argue, is actually basically a replacement for religion and it uses a lot of the similar sorts of top-down thinking it's also very relativistic that's not true of all of it and they also make claims that actually can't be can't be proven true or false which are claims that are definitely worth watching out for they're just unverifiable um, so like a big one within within what a lot of people do in literature departments would be to say that global capitalism is bad. So a lot of people, that's like a, that's just like a, like a first thought for a lot of people that get sort of indoctrinated into this sort of way of thinking. And it's pretty dangerous because if you think global capitalism is bad and you don't know what that means, but you have sort of vague idea, well, like America is capitalist in Europe and somehow maybe like there was some better time when there was no capitalism you don't think about like well maybe maybe like society has always operated on people trading and making transactions so is it like a critique of capitalism more about that like we shouldn't actually trade or put value put value differences on things um, and a lot of people I would say actually do they have some some bizarre idea of some like paradise so that's why I say it's kind of religious some pre capitalistic paradise where somehow like things just happened which is totally crazy because like everybody I've ever known like I mean if you do something that's hard and someone does something that's easy in terms of time and energy and thought like there needs to be some sort of way that you measure that and even in a trade society where you just trade and not use money I mean you have the same human nature there so a lot of these people like in these in in this sort of really left-wing sort of um, a lot of it's influenced by French critical theory they have like these these assumptions that they that they accept that aren't really even verifiable because global capitalism is bad like what would that even mean like you would have to have some way to specify your terms more to somehow actually be able to get data to even prove what 
I mean, some of those kind of claims are impossible to, to prove in the same way that science is provable in terms of predi predictive outcomes, but um, well, like a lot of those people, a lot of people just accept claims like that and kind of do whatever they want with them, and it leads to some very bizarre lines of thought that tend to stray away from facts, because if you start with assumptions that aren't factual, you end up in some very weird territory, and you almost forget how how getting data and then evaluating the data with an op with as an open mind as a possible as as possible and again conflicting opinions how important that is to thinking um, so I mean one more example I can maybe give about circular reasoning like for me when I first started learning guitar like this is a little more practical I didn't know very much about guitar like I only knew maybe power chords, bar chords maybe like some sus chords, like barely knew how to like figure out anything by ear. So it's kind of like I had like this very limited mental model of like what music was. So like as a consequence, a lot of times like the songs I learned a long time ago, I've relearned them now since I have a lot more experience with music and I'm like shocked at the way I used to play them. But they sounded totally good to me back then. But that's because like our brains kind of, like we, we build up models of the world that some somewhat limit what we can see and even like on a, like our senses like when I hear stuff now like my ears a lot clearer so like I hear I hear notes that I just couldn't hear before like no matter how much I wanted to it's kind of my brain didn't have enough sort of um, musical experience and also like the more types of chords you're exposed to and you play them and you play harder songs you just kind of like you're more open to the idea like oh yeah like not every chord in the song is going to be following some pattern that I could know beforehand and you just kind of open yourself up more um, so that's just an example of how like your mental model and the concepts you have or what you sort of are, are taking into a situation affects affects not only like what you're going to do within that situation, but it even can affect, like I said, it can affect your senses. Um, so, anyways, I didn't really have an agenda for this. I just am so tired of, I'm just like exhausted from not being able to say what I believe in America. And fortunately on YouTube, I found a lot of other people that think the same way I do. So if you're interested in, in what atheists think and skeptics, I would watch like some videos by the four most popular atheists and skeptics um, are Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens who passed away, Sam Harris, and Daniel Dennett. And they're very smart guys and some people find them offensive but I find them actually to be basically saying what a lot of scientists and rational people think. But I think that that mode of thinking for a lot of people that don't act that way sounds offensive. Especially if you haven't actually, if you don't have very much data from the scientific world. Um, some of their political statements should definitely be de debated and some of them could be very bad. But that's like, that's sort of a social question. Like how should we deal with other countries and stuff? And sometimes they get into that territory. And that doesn't interest me as much. I mean, it, it interests me, but I think it's more, everybody should participate in that conversation for sure. And I mean, any conversation, but... What interests, interests me more is just how they draw the line between basically having completely relativistic knowledge of the world versus scientific knowledge, and they do a good job explaining that. And they talk about sort of how science is always going to be an incomplete picture because we can never know everything. That's sort of the open mind position. And also they, they talk about not, kind of like I was saying, not not starting out with things that can't be true, proved true or false and bending reality to fit those statements however you sort of want them to fit. Um, and then there's another show called The Atheist Experience from Austin, Texas. And that one is like less confrontational, I would say. It would probably be easier for people who don't understand atheism to sort of start to understand it because the people there are, they just take phone calls and just talk and have conversations so they don't quite have as strong of like a big more total argument like maybe Richard Dawkins would have 
even though Richard Dawkins, in my opinion, is very open-minded, he's not saying that he knows the answers to the universe, but he does lay out, like, more of a system for, like, what we know, according to the scientific picture right now, that can, can be, um, a little bit threatening to people, whereas the people on the atheist experience, they just, they more just, like, wait and just hear what people have to say, and then just kind of, just talk through, like, well, how would we know that, like, what sort of assumptions are we making? How can we prove that true or false? So it's more of the process of being a skeptic, which ultimately leads a lot of people to be atheists like I am. It's not like atheism is a... It's not a religion, and it's not... It's not even a worldview, because the worldview is open. It's basically just... Just saying that there's certain things we can't know about, and to pretend that we know about them is very... Um, irresponsible. And it can lead into situation where you no longer have a pathway to truth um, because you've kind of blocked it off with irrational justifications for things that will prevent you from actually learning new things. Um, it could lead to closed-mindedness. It can lead to a lot of unnecessary division between groups, like different religious groups. Um, so you can just kind of see that process unfold. The atheist experience is a really good one. And then lately I've been reading a lot of books, not a lot, I just started reading some books about like modern neuroscience, like what we're learning about the brain. And I'm more interested in like stuff that's been published just the last couple of years, because I used to read about this kind of stuff like 10 years ago. Um, and things change so fast in that space because they're getting so much new data. I think that's a huge frontier for science, like the more we learn about our own brains is going to be pretty wild as we start to un understand more like why do we why do we see certain patterns in certain situations like what what like this idea of having concepts like what is a concept in our brain how does that sort of end up actually shaping the data so like there's a really interesting book um, that I just read that I would recommend it's called why everyone else is a hypocrite and it's just super fascinating. I've read some, whenever I read a book, I like to read the harshest criticism of it I can find so, so that I have an alternate opinion. So I found some criticisms of this book that is basically saying that it's sort of, actually I couldn't find a good criticism of the claims here, which is about how our, how our mind is structured into sort of functional modules, which basically means that like, the main idea is that we have sort of different things that are demanded of us in our environment and there's different functional parts of our brain which is to say that we don't have like there's not like areas in the brain where you could find like well here's the part of me that can do math here's the part of me that remembers how to drive a car so that's unconscious here's the part of me that makes me hungry it's not like you could find those parts in the brain but the argument is basically that our brains have evolved in such a way that that as the environment has demanded certain things of us it's kind of like our brains have had to evolve certain types of functionality so he uses the analogy to an iPhone and how basically like on an iPhone like the apps don't exist anywhere in the iPhone like apps are basically bits of functionality um, or like isolated pieces of functionality in terms of when you're using them but like in terms of the iPhone's memory like that functionality doesn't exist in like one location like it could be spread out all through the iPhone's memory but the iPhone like has ways of assembling that memory into the virtual like usage of the app which is true for computers in general so he talks a lot about computer memory and that kind of stuff but what's cool about it is this book is from like 2011 and the author's name is Kurzban um, I think the book's from 2011, so it's more up to date, or 2010. So it's just interesting, like, to start, you know, reading, like, about a lot of the experiments people are doing, and, like, what kind of data is out there, what kind of models we could start to form, and, like, this model, the modular functional model, might be totally wrong, it might be totally right. It explains a lot of um, experiments that would not be possible to explain otherwise. A lot of them is about morality, like how we can have sort of contradictory moral beliefs or unconscious moral beliefs. So it's really interesting, and the author is very honest and really like 
easy to um, get into because it's a popular science book. And the criticism I found about it, to go back to that, was that effective, something called effective neuroscience, which is more like um, analyzing the actual biology of the brain. And I assume trying to re relate that to emotions and sort of what emotions are, like not the experience of emotions, I don't think, but like how they actually work on the biological level. So some people are saying that this modular view like really doesn't um, doesn't get up at some of the like it's just kind of they're saying this is a naive model but I don't know I don't have enough data and I haven't read enough books like this and I haven't like gone like if I went to some neuroscience programs and could talk to the, like leading researchers I mean then you'd be in a position to really start to evaluate it more but to me this is just like this book is just really eye-opening and it introduces a lot of new concepts um, which you know they could just be totally wrong but but a lot of the experiments like one thing I like about this book too last thing I'd say is like it has tons of experiments in it so like even if this theory to explain these experiments is wrong this is a cool book because it gives probably like 50 to 100 experiments like every chapter has like I would say at least five or six like experiments explained in some detail and like what the data was. So it's good like because even if this mo if this theory's wrong, at least you're like learning like all right like I'm it, within this sort of experiment. This is the data that they got, so it makes you think because a lot of the data is pretty weird. Um, so it just kind of like raises a lot of things that you wouldn't think about normally, and the data is still going to hold like any theory that comes along. I mean, unless they're going to question the methodology and validity of these experiments. I mean, those experiments are going to have to be accounted for. So in a certain way, it's kind of like what astronomers have had to do. I mean, it's, astronomy data is less um, difficult to make problematic because it's just positions of things in, in space and time. And I mean, planets are pretty, are very predictable, their movements, whereas our brain is much more mysterious, like in terms of like what kind of data can we get about this this thing? And that's probably what I'm trying to learn about is what kind of data they even have. So a lot of the data in here is more behavioral data. And that's why that effective psychology would be more biological data about actual biological structures um, and brain structures. But I totally recommend this. Like, this book's super exciting. And I found a book about effective neuroscience, but it's really really long it's like 600 pages and really technical and I'm not a lazy person like I definitely want to read that but I kinda want to stay away from it because if I get into that I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do what I need to do in my daily life because I'll be 600 pages of slow reading so hopefully like I'll be able to find some other books that are more condensed like this about effective neuroscience and kinda find out what that is um, so that's about it I don't really have I didn't really have any reason to make this video aside from feeling kind of um, some sort of building tension that like it's just like you can't if you can't say what you think it's a very very horrible feeling and if you can't say if you and it, if you say what you think and people don't understand it it's also a bad feeling it's not quite as bad but it is a really bad feeling if you say what you think and people aren't even willing to try to understand it so that's kind of what I've been dealing with lately um, and like I don't have any desire to to like go around convincing people it's just I mean because to me it's just about sort of the process of weighing evidence and and actually like having conversations about specific things that, that we can actually know about but it is frustrating when people don't understand that process um, and I've been trying to understand why why is it that some people don't understand that process and to have to do with education level or like exposure to non-social data because a lot like we're all very social creatures and within a social world where you're where you're not confronted with sort of inhuman data that doesn't care what what we do about it whereas like business if you're in business or working somewhere it's more like it doesn't matter what people think about you and you can adjust your behavior and that's kind of what matters within science it doesn't matter I mean there's just facts there's just data to be explained 
So I've been kind of wondering, like, because I had kind of enough science education and math education to be literate in science and math. Whereas I think, like, that was hard to learn. Like, I'm a pretty smart person, and it was hard to learn calculus and, and physics and to actually understand evolution and, you know, enough where you get enough data and actually have the tools to actually understand that. So I've been kind of thinking, well, maybe a lot of people don't have the data and they don't have the tools to really understand what those viewpoints are saying. Um, so that's a little bit hard to know what to do with that situation because if people don't ever want to learn that stuff, it's kind of like you can't really have a conversation with them about it. Whereas if they are literate in it and they've, uh, and they've weighed the evidence and they have the reasoning tools, especially with math, to understand how math works and it's different than language and they understand how experiments work, um, it's sort of a different story when you start to have conversations with people. Um, so that's about it. It's feeling like, you know, if you, I think partly if you have anything that you just feel like you can't say, like I've, I think it's really important that we have live in a society where you can say what you think and have a conversation about it, even if people disagree, but people don't freak out. Um, so, I mean, for me, that issue's been atheism. I mean, I know, like, for a lot of people I've known, like, being homosexual is a huge problem. They run into, like, all sorts of horrible, um, horrible judgments passed on them that are very unfair. So, I mean, partly, like, this issue of being able to say I'm an atheist and have a conversation about it has given me more sympathy for what the homosexual community must must have gone through for a long time to feel like an outsider and you can't even engage in rational discourse and people discredit your the facts because I know a lot of the homosexual people and it's not it's not like a an issue of them being delusional or anything I mean they just feel how they feel so I can't imagine what it would feel like to have that denied it would be pretty awful um, it's also made me think a little bit about like what it what it would feel like to live in a totalitarian society where like let's say you, you knew that your leader was corrupt and and that just injustice was everywhere and this has happened tons of times through human history um, and you actually were going to get in trouble for actually saying what you thought on a daily basis and nobody could say what they thought it would be pretty horrifying so I mean you know, I'm just thankful that we live in a society where, like, I can make this video and say that I'm an atheist, um, and it's not, like, that big of a deal. I mean, that's what I've thought for a long time, and I know a lot of other people think the same way. And not have this video deleted or have people get super angry. Because, I mean, all I'd want to do is have a conversation about it. So, I mean, I'm thankful that we live in that society, but it's also a little bit frightening to think how many people wouldn't want an open society, because there's a lot of people who really don't really want certain things to be said, um, and it's worth thinking about, like, why would they want that, and what's driving that motivation, that sort of closed-mindedness, and even sometimes desire to hurt other people, or basically dismiss what other people are saying, and impose one's own view. It's all very um, worth thinking about, I think it's probably one of the most important things to think about, um, in terms of sort of a civilization value. Um, and the last thing I would say, I know I'm kind of rambling, is just like, I think the last thing that's kind of been interesting to me lately is to think how the project of science is misunderstood, how people try to dismiss facts, um, or the scientific process. Um, very confusing to me how people can deny science given like all the technological devices we have in medicine and like the internet and our iPhones and all this depends on scientific knowledge it just depends on the scientific project which has been going on since I mean since the Greek times but not really until the Renaissance and then I mean especially like in the 20th century it's just exploded and it keeps going faster so it's been interesting to me to think could a society come into it existence that would deny science and actually want to stop the project of science. And there's people that I've heard that would like that to happen. Um, 
I'm like, to me, scientific knowledge is very precious knowledge. It's very, very important for our understanding of the universe. And, and that we can use to do some amazing things, like build cities, build technology, like cure diseases, and it does cause a lot of problems, but it also does a lot of amazing things that have increased a lot of people's standards of living. So I've been a little bit horrified as I start to be more honest and talk to people about the lack of scientific appreciation. Um, it seems very hypocritical, especially in Western so societies, where we all like really depend on science. So it's almost like people haven't thought about what they're saying. And a lot of this has more to do with cons sort of like vague dismissals of reason, which like every scientist is having to engage with reason and evidence. So it's all very strange as you start to be more honest about stuff you believe in and actually engage with people. And um, I mean, politics and religion and sexuality, those are issues that are hard to talk about because they're so emotional. And there's so much irrationality built into a lot of that. So anyways, I just wanted to, to sort of talk about this because it's been bothering me a lot. I mean, since I was like 10, I'm 30 now, it's been bothering me. It's a lot of stuff I've been talking about. And lately, it's it's starting to become more of like an issue where I think it's really important that people start to say what they believe and have dialogues about these things, especially in our current world um, situation where where religion is so important. And how are we going to live in a society of tolerance and where we can hopefully improve things with religion and science having to live together? Um, so anyways, I just figured I would share my honest thoughts off the top of my head, and that's it. Okay, bye.